How do prisoners get so big and muscular? That's a really popular question I've seen. And what if I told you the answer is that what we've been told about rep ranges and hypertrophy isn't completely true. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Minus the Gym. And for anyone new to the channel, my name's Ryan. I'm a certified personal trainer, and I wanna help you get fit and healthy at home with no gym necessary. And in this video, we're talking about prisoners. And you know, one of my first introductions to the, you know, the concept of people working out in prison and getting in really good shape was actually the movie Con Air. I think it was made in 1997, but I could be completely wrong on that year. And it featured Nicolas Cage, and there was a scene where he was doing all kinds of calisthenics in his prison cell. Now that totally made sense because around that time in the late 90s in the state of California, they pulled workout equipment from all penitentiaries. So the inmates didn't have access to barbells, dumbbells, benches, and all that stuff. So they would have to use calisthenics to get into shape. Then about 10 years later, maybe a little more, I was introduced to a book called Convict Conditioning, which I've reviewed and featured here on the channel. And that book is basically a workout program that's all about calisthenics. It's high rep, basic calisthenics. But then the question becomes, is it true that prisoners really did use high rep, basic calisthenics to build muscle mass? I mean, you hear a lot about rep ranges. You know, the common thing that they say is five or less reps. If you're maxing out at five or less, it's pure strength. And then when you get to six to 15 reps, it's supposed to be the hypertrophy range, right? The magic hypertrophy area where you can build mass. And then anything over 15 reps, oh, now you're in endurance land and you're just working on endurance. Well, when I think back to when I was in the best shape of my life, just using strictly calisthenics, it had to have been my late 20s, right before I turned 30. I had just got into strict bodyweight training and I was just doing the basics, just trying to master the basics, doing high rep, high volume basics, and that's when I was the leanest, like my body composition was the best, and I had really good hypertrophy as well. And lately I've been digging into the science, like on Google Scholar, looking at all the different literature out there. And what I found is that so many studies have concluded that really the rep ranges when it comes to hypertrophy, they don't matter so much. I think the best example of this has to be this meta-analysis that I found, all right? They looked at 21 different studies and they analyzed the results. And what they concluded is that while five reps or less, the high load sets really are best for strength, you can induce hypertrophy with almost any load. As long as you take the set to or near failure, it doesn't matter if you're doing, you know, 10 reps, 12 reps, 30 reps, 50 reps, it really doesn't matter. You can still induce that hypertrophic response just by going to or near failure. So if you really wanna know how these prisoners are able to get so big and muscular, it's because they have nothing better to do all day but push-ups, pull-ups, dips, squats, lunges, leg raises, all of those basics. I mean, they might do unilateral variations and things like that, but overall, they're just doing a lot of volume of basic calisthenics, and that's enough to induce hypertrophy. And I mean, we see examples of this in so many places. If you just look at the New York scene, uh, guys like Hit Richards from the Calisthenics Kings, I mean, look at his physique, look at how big he is. And although he does a lot of advanced stuff, he does like handstand push-ups and tiger bend handstand push-ups, he does a lot of basics. And I've actually chatted with him on Instagram and he told me he works out for two hours a day. And he just, he's focused on the basics mostly. But then look at Hannibal for King, look at him. He's high rep basics as well. In Europe too, there's a lot of people in Europe doing high rep basics, they have great physiques. So. I think it just goes to show when you look at my past experience, what I see others doing like in New York and other places where it's part of their culture, they just get together and work out at the park. And when you look at prisoners, it's pretty obvious that the way that they're getting in shape, they're getting so big and muscular is that you can induce hypertrophy even without adding weight, even without heavy load. You can do it with light load as long as you take it all the way to failure. Now, the one thing I'm not sure about and this is something I'd probably need to talk to a prisoner about, is what about diet? Because diet is pretty important, you know, and um, just from what I've heard, they eat a lot of pasta 
and things like that. You know, and they'll like they'll get sausage and other things and make a sauce out of it and just have this huge bowl of pasta every night so they get enough calories. But I mean, kind of makes you wonder how important is diet if they're able to bulk up like that and get shredded on a diet that's high in, in pasta and in carbs. Anyway, so that's my take on how prisoners are able to get so big and swole. Let me know down below in the comments, do you agree? Has your experience taught you the same thing? High rep basics is really good for that. I'd love to hear from you, all right? And also, make sure if you haven't already, hit subscribe if you wanna stay tuned. I'm gonna be featuring a lot more workout content here on the channel because what I've done is like, I've recently just got kind of burnt out on the whole gymnastic style calisthenics. I'm stepping away from that for a while and I've just been embracing high rep basics again and I'm absolutely loving it. So I've got some great workout content, free workout PDFs and stuff like that coming your way. So make sure you stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.